Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. A Springbok fly half shootout is set to take center stage this weekend after Rusty Erasmus named 10 changes to his Springbok side to face Australia in the second test of the uh, Rugby Championship or the Springbok second test of the Rugby Championship, which will be in Perth. By the way, Drinkers Dupacy also taking on Israel Adesanya this weekend, also in Perth with uh, Sia Khaleesi and Ibn Etzebe set to apparently walk out with him ahead of the bout. But let's get focused into what we are talking about today. And uh, that is the Springbok Fly Hop Shootout. Ponte Pollard, Mani Ibok, Sasha Fahami Gomazulu, all in the team for this weekend. I'm going to put the team up there so we have a look at it, shall we? And uh, it's a very interesting one because there are three fly halves named in the side. Money Ebok, Hunter Pollard, traditionally out and out fly half. Sasha Fahami Gomazulu, a bit more of a utility player um, who favors fly half, but coming through the ranks in the URC actually hadn't played there. Um, and it's actually played his first professional game starting a fly half for the Springboks last weekend. Um, a position of uh, controversy when it comes to Springboks because it is a position that we haven't had a lot of depth for the last few years. Uh, you know, we've had Alton Yankees, for example, and Andre Pollard. Those were the only two flowers we really used for about a three, four year cycle, as well as Damian Williams that when really needed to. Um, and uh, then, for example, obviously the, the whole scandal with Alton Yankees dropping out. Um, Pudge Apollo getting injured, and all of a sudden, Mike Lebok gets brought into the fray, and he ends up going on to get the Breakthrough Player of the Year for the Springboks in 2023. Um, such was his rise from um, during, during in the Bok camp and started in both the quarterfinal and semifinal of the Rugby World Cup. Man of the match against Scotland as well in the group stages. Started as well when we narrowly lost to Ireland. Um, he's actually only, I think, lost one game when he started at fly half for the box. And uh, only lost three games in total, of which I think it was one game he came on for five minutes. Um, so he's got a phenomenally good record, does my Ebok, with winning games with the Springboks. Uh, Sasha Fahmi Gomez Zulu has started once against Australia and uh, beat Australia very well. And then you've got the veteran, Honje Pollard, 70, I think 71, 72 tests, um, you know, uh, on track to become, you know, the the the, the record point scorer for the Springboks. Um, you know, Mr. Cool has played in three World Cups, winning two of them, played in the British and Irish Lions series, has won everything you can win in a Springbok shirt, rugby championships, as a British and Irish Lions series, World Cups, you know, he's done it all. Um, and he's not even that old, to be honest. So we're looking at three options who will all make the next World Cup from an age point of view. So the question is, Who's got the front runner? What are the options? Will we see Honjo Pollard convert to a different position? Um, is Sash Fami Gomez's versatility going to get him the nod? Um, or can we find a way to get Mai Liebach, who is our best attacking flyer half, into the side? Um, let's get into it, shall we? So I think in terms of Sash Fami Gomez, you know, he is viewed as kind of the complete package. Good defender, um, good attacking attacker, good with the ball in hand. Um, you know, has a good boot, and then we, we've seen he's a really, really classy goal kicker. Um, Hondre Pollard is uh, the general, that's what he's been known as, you know, in terms of uh, very, very solid at 10 from a defensive point of view. Doesn't quite have the creativity on attack that, that for example, Mani Liebach has, um, but uh, very cool, calm and collected, and very much a big match player. You know, he's got, you know, talk about BMT, he is Mr. BMT. You know, they've called him Ask Cole for a reason. You know, coming in off the bench in that semi-final against England and then, and then kicking us to, to victory um, against uh, New Zealand as well as uh, almost kicking us to victory against Ireland in that second test. Uh, so he is the big, main, big game player. Then you've got the wild card in Mali Liebach because what you get from Mali Liebach is exciting rugby. You get tries from him. You get attacking uh, output like no other flower half. Um, you know, he opens up defenses. He's like... He's like a locksmith, you know. It doesn't matter what defense you're playing against, he finds ways of getting through. Where there's chips over, it's gravels in behind, it's, you know, lofted passes, it's flat passes, it's running the line himself. He's, a, he's, a, he's exceedingly quick, actually, is my knee box. So he's our best attacking fly half. Um, and you speak to the players, for example, also very much a general type of character, takes charge and manages games incredibly well. So, you know, he is, for me, probably our best fly half until you look at his goal kicking, because that has been an issue in the past. And when you're playing test match rugby in particular, and you're playing, you know, um, big sort of matches out and playoff games, goal kicking becomes a factor. 
Um, I've said this before many times. You know, if my knee for example, played for in New Zealand, we had other options for goal kick. You had uh, played for France, for example, Thomas Ramos. I think you'd be one of the best flyers in the world, right? You know, I, I genuinely do. You know, I don't think there's there's too many flyers out there which who read the game as well as Mario Levok does. But there's a deficiency in the goal kicking. And that's where Sash Fami Gomazuz almost had like the inside track because he brings elements of Mario Levok with the solidity of Andre Pollard and brings the goal kicking. So he's kind of the complete package. He's like a mixture of the two. And uh, which is why I think at the moment he's kind of got the front runner. So much so that. We're now looking at converting Andre Pollard into an inside center, not necessarily permanently, but if he's going to be a bench option, he needs to be able to cover multiple positions. People have also spoken about the fact that Mike Lebo could potentially play at 15. Now, if you're going to accommodate Mike Lebo at 15 to accommodate Sasha Angamazula, I'd rather have Mike at 10, Sasha at 15, for example. Uh, I think that's a better, 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 better use of it. You've also got Daniel Billums obviously coming back, which you know will complicate things long term. Um, but, you know, if you've got a Pollard starting at 12, for example, you can have Mike Leibock at 10, no issue. If you've got Sash Palmer Goblin Zulu starting at 12, you have Mike Leibock at 10, no issue. If you've got Sash Palmer Goblin Zulu starting at 10, all of a sudden you can have whoever you want at 12, whether it's Pollard or, or, or Damien Delendi or Andre Estazen. Um, you can also have anybody you want at 15, you know, in Villarue, Damien Vilmsa. So, you know, it's about finding the best combinations, you know. What are the best combinations we want? You know, it's not necessarily, and this is the thing about the spring market side, they're not necessarily all about picking the 15 best players. What are the combinations? You know, for example, you know, are you picking just you know your two best wings and your best fullback, or are you picking those three uh, in terms of players who complement each other? For example, you know, the fact that when when Andre Pollard plays traditionally, Ray really Larue is played as that creative um, outlet, that that playmaker, that that person that can create opportunities, that can create tries. Whereas when Mike Leibach was playing, you could have David Williams at fullback because Mike Leibach can sort of create those opportunities and fulfill that really LaRue type of role. So it's a bit of a give and take, isn't it? And uh, very interesting to see this weekend, all three players are in the lineup. And I think we could see them all in the park at the same time. I think we could see a Mani at 10, Pollard at 12, Sasha at 15. You know, we could see Mani at 10, Sasha at 12, and then Pollard coming later to, uh, you know, to replace a, a Sasha Palmer Gomezulu. So there could be lots of different combinations. And I think they will play around with those combinations throughout the rest of the year and in the years to come as we try and find the best way to slot what are currently our best three flowers. You've still got Siemasuku in the wings. You've still got Jordan Hendricks there in the wings as well. Try and sort of find a way to slot all these players in and try and find an environment where we can get the best possible combinations to get the best box side moving forward. What do you think those combinations are? Who is your preferred choice? What do you think the future choices are? And how do we make it work? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. And I'll chat to you soon.